Hi there, I'm Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network. Thanks for tuning in to Debt Bites, our YouTube channel, where we talk about all things debt and credit. Today, I want to talk about helping somebody who's struggling with a debt that Gatestone and company is now collecting. Gatestone is a contingency debt collector. That's the most common type of debt collector in the US. It essentially is someone who is going to write to you and call you, pretty much limited to those two things, in order to get you to pay something that you have gone without paying for several months. A good example would be Bank of America credit cards. They use Gatestone quite a bit over the last several years. So let's assume for a moment you haven't paid Bank of America for eight months. Gatestone calls you, writes you a letter shortly thereafter, trying to collect on a $6,000 balance. When you're dealing with a debt collector like Gatestone, you are typically going to have some more options that you wouldn't necessarily have had with the original creditor. For example, when you're dealing with the original creditor and you've gone past the charge off where you haven't paid and it's been six or seven months in a row that you didn't pay, they place it out with debt collectors like Gatestone, you have an opportunity to negotiate a settlement even with payment terms in excess of what Bank of America was typically going to do or make available to you prior to that charge off. So you can settle debt directly with Bank of America in this example, but you're not going to get more than 90 day terms. Whereas after charge off and it's with a collection agency like Gatestone, not only can you settle usually for even a better, lower lump sum amount, but you can also find some of the flexibility that you may need in order to be successful with your settlement strategy. So what does that look like on a $6,000 balance in this example? Let's assume for a moment that you're able to settle with Gatestone for $2,000. So roughly a third of what you owe. And then instead of settling it all up front, which I'll pause right here and say it is by far and away better for you to negotiate a single lump sum settlement payment and get it done in one payment so that nothing can go wrong. But let's say you don't have the two grand, but you do want to knock this debt down and get rid of it and settle it for whatever savings you can get. And that's 2000 you can usually negotiate some terms, payoff terms with Gatestone. Say you wanted to split it into four so that it was $500 payments over four months. That, that's an option sometimes. However, when you need to make more in monthly payments, you're typically not going to be looking at the same kind of settlement percentages. So sometimes there's a premium for needing that flexibility. The longer time you need, usually the more you're gonna pay. Not always though, sometimes that flexibility is just all the way there on monthly payments even much longer than four months. But again, I highly recommend you try and knock these down in one payment. So Gatestone, as a contingency debt collector, is not gonna sue you, but you're wondering, hmm, well, if they're not gonna sue and I don't pay them, maybe I'll just wait and, and see what happens next. The problem is, is that Bank of America has begun to sue again. Um, in the height of the recession, we saw, and especially after the CFPB came on the scene from a consumer protection standpoint, we saw many of the larger banks not directly litigate their unpaid accounts. And Bank of America had seemingly stopped suing directly in their name for a while. But now I see that happening more and more. So losing the opportunity to settle with Gatestone, where I think you have some of your best opportunities to settle with these contingency collectors, and I'm picking on Bank of America because I already have, uh, but Gatestone collects for a lot of people that might sue you next if you don't pay. It's an ideal situation to work with a contingency collector, one as flexible as Gatestone, and not risk the eventuality of something down the line that you don't know. You're not sure who's going to get the account next. And if it's an attorney, fact is, your risks have increased dramatically if Bank of America sends it to a local, an attorney that collects debt regularly uh, and that's licensed in your state. So it's sometimes okay to let a deal go by if you can't fund one. And then there's other times where that's a really bad idea. Do you prioritize the debt that Gatestone is collecting on or do you skip it and use your available funds to work with somebody who's much more known or, or at, you're at risk of being sued by? That's something that you can talk to me about on the phone. I do free consultations. You can call the hotline you see on the screen. I'm option two, press two, rings my phone. And we also talk about that or those get into that kind of specificity in the comments on all of our YouTube channels. So you're more than welcome to post in the comments below and include 
what you're dealing with with Gatestone, who the original creditor is they're trying to collect for, the balance owed, how long it's been since you paid, what state you live in, and then list some of the other debts that you have if you have others that are in collection and who those debt collectors are and the balances and how long it's been since you paid those. You can generally walk away from our discussion with a better understanding of what you're going to do next and why. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next video.